This morning, we are going to do a left and right circuit. So you need one dumbbell that you can press over your head or kettlebell. Actually, kettlebell would probably be preferred if you got it. Uh, but we are going to do a left right circuit. So that means we're going to go through all five exercises on your left side. Then you're going to go through all five exercises on your right side or vice versa. So here's what it looks like. Uh, you're going to start on the ground and we'll do two Turkish get ups, but really one and a half. Um, so if I'm starting with the weight in my left hand, uh, you know, you'll, you'll do your get up all the way up, all the way down. And then on the last one, you end standing up from there. You'll do eight presses. Okay. So everything kind of flows together. Like the, whenever you're done with one exercise, the weight will be in the right spot or close to the right spot for the next exercise. So after your last get up, you stand all the way up and then we're doing eight presses on one side. Um, and then we're going to do eight goblet squats, but if you hold the weight on one side, so instead of holding weight in the middle, now the weight, the load is offset. So it's just a little bit different. So we do eight uh, squats there. The next one, the weight will just come down to your side. You're going to do a lateral lunge and that row. So you step out, let your chest face the ground and row. Okay, so that's kind of like become one of my go-tos now because it's you can combine two movements into one and it's uh, it's good work. Um, so then after that, the last one, the weight will be hanging down by your side. So after that last row, we're just going to go into eight kettlebell one hand kettlebell swings. If a swing isn't for you, we can just make it like a, a deadlift. So we'll do eight there. Then you just, um, you can go back to the beginning if that helps you. You can go back to the, to the get up, but I'll, I'll, because the kettlebell is always like kind of in the spot that you need it to end in, I'll probably just go back through backwards if you can remember it. Because then instead of taking the time to get down onto the floor, I'm just switching hands and going for the, the swing and then the lunge with the row and then the bringing it up for the squat, then the shoulder press, then ending with the get up. So if you're following along with me, I'll be going down through all the exercises and then back up through them when I start with the other hand. Okay. All right. So let's grab a foam roller today. Starting to move, uh, get rolled out. While you're get, jumping on that, I'm going to get this clock set up. Uh, we are going to go five times through, um, and we're going to try to, f the, the guess, the time is kind of a guess. Uh, we'll see how the four minutes works out. I might have to change that up a little bit, um, but we're going to try to get through both hands in four minutes. So we'll know after the first, first uh, round if that's going to be possible. So we're going to go four minutes times five. Uh, go five times through the through the circuit, and we're going to try. It. We're going to rest for thirty seconds in between. So that's the plan. We'll see if it works out. I might make some changes on the way through. All right. So as you're rolling out here, just uh, kind of hit the spots that are the most sore. And then we're going to be using the foam roller a little bit for the stretches. With uh, 4th of July weekend coming up, it's just going to give you the schedule. We are, we'll have our regular schedule all week, uh, Saturday, no classes at the gym, say at the gym, not in the gym. Uh, so Saturday, no classes at the gym. And then Sunday we are going to have the recovery circuit that I'll do. So MV usually does those, but I'm going to do the recovery circuit on Sunday morning, which is, uh, just a lot of mobility stuff. Um, we'll do some shoulder mobility, some hip mobility, some stretching, some like light moving around. 
Um, so it'll be a nice way to, I don't know, maybe if you go for a run on uh, Saturday morning or something like that, Sunday will be a nice recovery day. No, um, you know, maybe we'll uh, take a poll and see if, uh, see how many people would do a Saturday morning circuit. We could make that fun. Keep an eye on the Facebook group. I'll put that question in there. Okay. Um, let's uh, take care, take the last 30 seconds here and take care of your lower body, whatever whatever you feel like you need to get to roll in your lower body. Fifteen seconds left. Um, good. So let's move to your back. So we're going to roll your shoulder blades first really quickly. If you haven't done it yet. Just give one or two passes over uh, the middle. Then we're going to roll to the side. Give a couple passes on each side, just underneath your shoulder blade. Okay, we're just tilting. Our right, last thing we're gonna roll, we usually don't do it um, just because, I don't know, you kind of have to have the right equipment for it, but see if you can make it work. Um, we're gonna roll like this area right in here, kind of like where your chest meets your shoulder. So I guess with this shirt, it's kind of right where that seam is. Um, these rollers are nice for that because they have that rounded end and you can just kind of get it to, to rest right there. So if you lay on your stomach, you're gonna roll right over and kind of put the roller, the edge of the roller where your pec meets your shoulder. And then from there, as you're laying on it, you don't have to roll back and forth, but you can um, move your arm. And as you move your arm, you're gonna be kind of pulling that tissue underneath the roller. If you have a tennis ball or a softball or something like that around, that would also be a good thing to use. Um, if you, it's just not working for you on the floor, you can use the wall. Just means you got to get kind of up close and personal with the wall. But if you can press that tissue or pin that tissue down, then take your arm through a couple different ranges of motion. You can go around here. You can kind of do an upside down floor slide. But really, we're just trying to, to press on and loosen up that tissue that's at the front of your chest and the front of your shoulder. You shouldn't feel like you're pressing on your on, sh on shoulder bones. Okay, you should be more towards your towards the middle of your body on muscles. So you, we don't want you pressing on the smaller bones in your shoulder. It should be kind of that really thick part of your pec. And like I said, we usually don't do that one, but uh, it's not because it's not important. It's more, it's more a function of, you know, it's hard for people to do because it's, you have to kind of have the right equipment for it. But as soon as you figure out how to do it, that's one that can really help open up your posture or at least put you in a position that we can open up your posture. Uh, okay. So using the roller, uh, we'll put the roller in front of you. You're going to put your hands on it. Um, kind of in this all fours position, you're going to roll the roller out, keep your thumbs facing the ceiling and try to duck your ears in between your arms. Shitting your uh, hips back towards your heels. And then we come back up. So you're going to push that roller out, keeping your thumbs facing the ceiling. Palms should face each other. 
We're just sinking down into that lat stretch. Then we come up to all fours again. Let's go through that about three more times. If you don't have a roller, it's okay. You can walk your hands out. No problem there. You can play with the width of your hands too. So uh, we want them about shoulder width apart, but you can try a little bit farther apart. You can try a little bit more narrow. Remember, always just keeping those thumbs facing up towards the ceiling. And good. From there, let's come up to half kneeling. So one knee on the ground. Uh, remember, you're keeping the, your ribs down in front, your tailbone tucked under. Uh, so once you find your stretch here, we're just going to push forward a little bit. So we take that little push. Here, then we're going to turn your foot out to about 45 degrees and push your knee out that way. So we're getting two slightly different stretches here. Always keeping the ribs down. Don't let yourself, your back arch into these. It shouldn't take much to push forward into the stretch. So we just alternate between those two. Staying tall ribs down and kind of flush or flat with your belly, keeping your tailbone tucked. All right, let's go ahead and switch sides. So take a second, find that stretch, get your ribs down, belly nice and strong. And we're just pushing forward, slightly out to the side. All right, from here, we're gonna to go to a push-up position. You're gonna take one uh, foot and stack it up on the other. Think about one foot pushing your other foot down towards the floor or your other heel down towards the floor for a calf stretch, All right? So from here, we're gonna rock forward. So we bend those toes, rocking forward. Then we're pushing your, pressing your heel down towards the floor. Then you're pushing your hips up towards the ceiling for a big calf stretch. Big stretch down the back of your leg. So it's kind of just like a one-legged downward facing dog. We'll go back to the push-up position. Rock forward, bend those toes. Push the heel back down towards the ground. Push your heel up or hips up towards the sky. Push-up position. Rock forward. As you rock forward, really try to mobilize those toes. We fold in half, big calf stretch, big hamstring stretch. Let's go one more time, rock it forward. Push the heel down towards the ground, hips up towards the sky. All right, we're gonna repeat the process on the other side. So we rock forward, big bend with your toes, push the heel back down towards the ground. And then lift your hips up towards the sky. Big hamstring stretch, big calf stretch. All right, let's repeat. So we rock it, rock it forward, heel to the ground, hips to the sky. Rocking forward, heel to the ground, hips to the sky. And one more time, rocking forward, heel down to the ground and hips up towards the sky. All right, good. From there, we'll go ahead and stand. And let's do a two-way lunge. So we're gonna step forward with your 
left leg, and then take your left leg, stepping out to the side. This will be the last bit of warm up here. So let's do five of each of these. We are gonna be doing those lateral lunges, so we wanna make sure we do a few in warm up. And take it to the other side. Step it forward. Out to the side. Same foot stepping the whole time. Foot that's not stepping is staying glued to the ground. Okay. So just to repeat the circuit, starting on your back. Okay, so if I have a weight in my left hand here, we do a get up and a half. So you're getting all the way up, then I would go down and come back up. Once you stop here, eight presses. On that last press, you bring the weight right down. We're doing a goblet squat. The weight is off to the side. So eight squats there. Then we're just dropping the weight down. Uh, because it's in my left hand, I'm gonna step to the right. Row, step to the right, let your chest face the floor and row. Uh, from there, we've got uh, eight swings. So pushing your hips back. Remember that's a hip hinge, so we should be using the butt, your butt and back of your legs to do that. And if swings aren't for you, let's just let that weight drop down right in between your feet for a deadlift. And from there, I'm just going to go back up the ladder using my other hand. So one position kind of flows into the next. Like I said, the timing is going to be a little bit of an experiment because I haven't done this, uh, this timing. Like I haven't done these exercises with the four minutes. So we'll see how it goes. Maybe we'll make some changes or maybe not. But uh, let's get ready to start with the Turkish get up. Um, and we'll go for four minutes. You're, you're going to go from one side to the other. We'll see how long that ends up taking. Okay. All right. So starting with a get up in three, two, one, and here we go. As you're doing those get ups, as you first start to sit up from the floor, Try to do it without lifting your straight leg off the floor. So after you stand up the second time, go right into a press for eight. Goblet squat for eight. I say goblet squat, but it's just that squatting motion, the weight off to the side. You'll notice it feels different, especially at the bottom. Dropping that weight down. All right, I'm just working into the swings on the other side. Lateral lunge and row. Just working my way back up.
weight comes up for the goblet squat. If you don't have a kettlebell, it is hard to hold a uh, dumbbell over on your side. If that's an issue, just turn this into a goblet squat. No big deal. Shoulder press. And then a get up. The weights in your right hand, you're going to step back with your left leg. about 10 seconds left, then we're going to rest for 30. Uh, any questions or anything on that, shout it out. I think if you have a, if you have a dumbbell, you're kind of doing the best you can with a one hand swing and that probably won't work out so well. You can turn that into a two hand swing or just make it a one hand deadlift because you won't be able to swing back between your legs. Yeah, start with the hand that you ended with. So back into it for four minutes. Here we go. Starting with the hand that you finished up with. And that last shoulder press, bring it down for a squat. Drop it down to your side, lateral lunge with the row. Finishing up with the swing or deadlift. I'm going right to the other side. Lateral lunge with the row. Bring it up for the goblet squat. Shoulder press. And get up to the last. The 
The side that you're holding the weight on will stay glued to the floor. So we got 30 seconds left of the four minutes. And then we've got 30 seconds of additional rest time. Nice thing is that we start and finish on the floor. We just kind of lay there in between. That's two times through. We're going to do it three more times through for a total of 20 minutes today. Start with the side that you finished up on in 10 seconds. Three, two, one, and here we go. Remember on those goblet squats, we're trying to keep your arches nice and big. Don't let them collapse in. It'll take your knees with you. Onto the swing. Working my way back up the other side here. Lunge with the row. Okay, 30 seconds left of the four minutes. And we've got 30 seconds of rest.
That was round three. We've got two to go. All right, five seconds left in our four minutes. And we start our 30 second rest. Ten seconds. Starting with the get up. Three, two, one. Here we go. Round four. After the squat, dropping down to the lateral lunge with the row. From there, the swing. Other side. After the swing, we're lunging. Make sure that chest faces down towards the floor. Into the squat. Keep an eye on that kettlebell when you're on the get-ups. Help you balance it, especially as you get tired. Forty-five seconds left in the four minutes. Thirty seconds left in our four minutes. So we got a minute to rest. So the get-ups are, like especially that last round of get-ups here, are really most important to be really sure that you're tight and solid on, especially as you're fatigued. So we're going to be ending with. Well, if you're doing it the way I'm doing it, you're going to be ending with one of the more, more challenging movements. So making sure you're tight, 
strong. Keep your eyes on that kettlebell. Got 20 seconds till the last round here. Make sure on those goblet squats, you've got some big toe pressure into the floor. So you don't just uh, leave your toes up in the air. We want your whole foot to press down into the floor. We got three seconds, two, one, and here we go. Last round. Take this last round to make sure everything's at full depth. Form is great. Moving on to the swing. Swing on the other side. And back up with a lunge. After the lunge, bring it up for the squat. Shoulder press. Wrap it up with the get up. Keep one eye on that weight. Thirty seconds left in your full minute. Or in your four minute, I should say. Once you're done, you're going to stay on our back and do a quick breathing drill. Ten seconds left in our four minutes. Three, two, one. And relax. All right, laying down on the floor, knees bent, feet flat. Put your left hand on your stomach and your right hand on your chest. Breathe normally, like breathe as you need to right now. But we're just seeing where the breath goes. If you feel your left hand moving more, breathing into your belly, which is good. At this point, if you're trying to recover and get control of your breath again. That's both should be expanding. Both your uh, 
left and right hands. Lying on your back is a really easy way, especially when your heart rate is up. It's a great way to actually feel your heart rate. As you're checking in with your heart rate, we're just trying to bring that back down, bring our breathing back under control. In a bit of time, you'll notice your right hand starts rising up and down more or your ribs start stop expanding quite as much because we're not getting those chest breaths, which is fine. You want to be pulling those breaths deep down into your belly. From here, let's go ahead and sit up. So we're just sitting in a comfortable posture here. It might be cross leg, it might be 90-90 uh, with your hips, one hip turned in, one hip turned out. Might be sitting tall, both legs straight, whatever works best for you. Again, just staying tall, creating all that space to breathe into. Bring that heart rate back down. We're going to take three more breaths here. And then I'll let you go for the day. Right after I write down attendance, that is. Okay. Well, that was one of the tougher left right circuits. Sometimes I find like, I think those are kind of easier, but the extra two reps and the extra minute made a big difference there. That was good. Uh, Carol, Olay, and Ted, Amy. Oh, there was somebody else. Now we're good. Okay. All right, gang. Have a fantastic day. Stay uh, cool if you can. We might be hanging out in our basement all day, but. Uh, have a great day. We'll talk to you guys soon.